In this video, I will show you how you can use SnapGene to create primers and simulate a PCR reaction. In this file, I have a sequence for the human EGFR promoter region. What I want to do is to design PCR primers that will add restriction sites to either end of this sequence so I can use this fragment in restriction cloning. Specifically, I want to add a site for ACC651 to the beginning of the sequence and a site for XH01 to the end of the sequence. Let's create the forward primer. To do this, I will switch to the sequence view and click and drag on the sequence that I want to be the primer. I want the primer to have a melting temperature of approximately 60 degrees. And as I click and drag to make the selection, SnapGene provides real-time updates on the melting temperature based on my selection. In this case, the first 17 bases will give me a melting temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. To add this as a primer, I will go to Primers, Add Primer. Since this will be the forward primer, I will select to make a primer from the top strand sequence. I will then call this primer EGFR.4 and I will also add a short description for my own reference. Next, I will switch to the Insertions tab. Here you can add codons, restriction sites or peptide coding sequences by selecting an option from the drop down menus. For this example I want to add a restriction site for ACC651 to the start of my primer. So I will click on the beginning of the primer sequence and then select ACC651 from the drop down menu and click insert. Notice that the restriction site sequence has been added and can be identified by the red font. Since some restriction sites do not cut efficiently at the end of a linear piece of DNA, it is recommended to add up to six bases to improve cutting efficiency. So I will manually add the sequence TAA GCA at the five prime end. To save this primer, I will click on the add primer to template button. I will now do a similar process to add the XHO1 site to the end of the sequence. Again, I will click and drag on the sequence to select the bases that give me a melting temperature of approximately 60 degrees Celsius. In this case, this is 17 bases. Then I will go to primers, add primer. This time I want to make a primer from the bottom strand. I will call this primer egfr.rev and I will also give it a short description. Now I will switch to the insertions tab and click on the beginning of the primer sequence before selecting XHO1 from the drop down menu. As before, I will click the insert button to add this site. I will also manually add the bases TAA, GCA to the five prime end to improve cutting efficiency. And finally, I will select the add primer to template button to add the primer to the file. Now with the primers designed, I can simulate the PCR by going to actions, PCR. To specify the primers for PCR, I can either click on the first primer in the main window and then shift click on the second primer, or I can use the drop down menus at the bottom of the window. With both primers selected, I will rename the file EGFR Promoter PCR and click the PCR button to simulate the reaction. In this new file, you can see that the ACC651 and XHO1 sites have been added to my sequence. Switching to the history view will provide a schematic flowchart of the steps I have just performed. If I go to the primers view, I can see the list of primers used in this file. You can also see additional primer information including the sequence, binding region, directionality and melting temperature. If you want to proceed to order these primers, you can export them as a text file by going to Primers, Export Primer Data. You can export additional information about the primers if you so wish. I will save the primers as a text file where you can see their name and sequence in a simple list, ready to be copied over to your primer order form from your supplier. And that wraps up this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned how to create primers and to simulate a PCR within SnapGene. For more information about simulating other techniques in SnapGene, check out the video tutorials on the SnapGene website. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. 
If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.